Hello everyone, I'm Matteo, and Konstantin doesn't have a working mic. Yeah, I, I will be Konstantin. Yeah, I am Konstantin. Yeah, nice to meet you. Hi guys. We are part of a wonderful team that makes Bear. Bear is a no taking application for Mac, iOS, and iPad. If you ask me, it's the best no taking application in the store. It's free, you can Biased. download it, buy the app. Biased. And we're part of Shiny Frog. We've been making apps since 2005. It's a very long time, so for give you some context, there were like no App Store, no iPhone. No Twitter. No Twitter. Not Twitter, yeah. So we did like many, many apps. And I've been We didn't make Twitter, just to make sure. Yeah. I mean. I've been working with Konstantin for so long that very often we finish each other food. I was going for <laughs> code, but sharing is caring, so correct. So before starting, I want to make a deal with you. It's late, you're tired, I don't want to do this. There is a legendary party after. So what about if I go really, really, really fast and you pretend to enjoy the talk? Yeah, it's I love it, I love it. Okay, thank you. So why are we here today? It's a literal question. I, uh, don't, I have no idea. I, I, I think that you can go to the next slide and we can see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. We are here mostly because you're smart. I'm smart? No, not Constantine. You, you the audience. Yeah. Developer are the smartest person that we know. And that's a very good thing. They are hardworking people. But... <laughs> but, but joke. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes this becomes a problem. Because being very smart... <laughs> yeah! No. You see, I was too smart. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you're a tad bit too smart. And this leads to overthinking. And overthinking leads to some question. Some question that no one should ask themselves. Yes. Like, why should they make my UI using a storyboard? I'm a coder, so I will code it all. I write tons of code. Or core data, yeah. I guess I can write something simpler. Or unit tests are for suckers. I don't need unit test. So what we can do to avoid this kind of overthinking? Just take a moment, relax. And we can acknowledge that most applications have common needs. Mm -hmm. We are not special. No one of us is special. So there are frameworks, existing libraries, that can help us to focus on the core of our application instead of overthinking. And there is no need to reinvent the wheel every time. So we we'll try to today to get all the free wheel that the framework and Apple gave us. Absolutely. And we decided to focus on mainly on free topics. That's because um, mainly on conferences, we speak with people and we understood that there are, they do crazy stuff and they are actually happy about it and we so like free topics that are common to each app and we would like to talk about our approach in these fields so the first one will be ui because every app has a ui a user interface so it's it's pretty common the second one is persistence so how do you save your data on disk and the third one will be unit testing because we think that they are important Let's start with the UI. Um, you can uh, lay out your views inside your application in many different ways. You have many options. The first option would be to code everything. Actually, this is one of the most common approaches that I um, found speaking with people, and that's crazy. So the second one is third-party frameworks. Uh, you have many of them. You can choose whatever you want. Uh, I don't know them, so don't ask me about third-party uh, frameworks. And the third one is Interface Builder. The beauty of Interface Builder is that it, it's, uh, Apple gives it for free to you inside Xcode. So uh, we would like to um, talk only about Interface Builder. All the other approaches, I think that you know them too well because many of, of you are using them. So um, let's start with the evolution of Interface Builder. Everything, let's, let's say, started with nib and zip files. Um, we are talking about 19 and 8-ish uh, 
the end of 80s, and uh, those files uh, held a um, view inside of them, and usually you instantiate a view controller, and the view came up from the XIP files. Then Apple introduced storyboards. It was 2011. It was amazing. So uh, with storyboards, you were able to see all the flow of your app inside one view. So it's like a, a bird's eye of your entire project, of your entire program. And we love it since the beginning. Uh, then came Auto Layout. And actually, it happened the next year. Uh, so with Auto Layout, you were able to uh, put constraints between your views uh, without having to resize the frame and the bounds by hand and having the uh, iOS layouting the views for you depending on the size and stuff. So actually, we asked ourselves, why is Apple introducing this kind of stuff? Uh, and the answer came three months later with the introduction of the iPhone 5. iPhone 5 was the first Apple device, mobile device, that has a different resolution from any other mobile device that Apple produced till that moment. So it was amazing. Without a layout, you could just um, build your UI for all, every possible uh, sides of the device, uh, for every possible resolution. We embrace it from day one. Then, 2017, safe areas. Safe areas are, are a subset of uh, uh, the out layout. Uh, they replaced the margins. And with safe areas, you were able to uh, declare parts of the view uh, that could or could not contain other views. And this was amazing as well. So we thought, like, oh my god, wh why did they introduce uh, safe areas? Actually, yeah, margins didn't work very good. But um, again, why? Do they do it? Uh, so the next uh, September was introduced the iPhone 10. Uh, so everything became clear. W just replacing your constraints from the margins to the safe areas, you were able to handle this new device with all the curves, all, all the notches, and stuff like this. So um, what are actually the advantages of using Interface Builder with using um, storyboards with you and using out the layout. You have the same results as you, can, you have writing your code directly, so layouting your views and the code, but with doing less, actually, once you understand how do it work. Um, every time that a new OS, new iOS, came out, you have the new features f from that release immediately, just because Apple is using those technologies. So if you are using those technologies, you will have everything for free. And uh, again, um, just with the small fixes every summer, you can embrace all the new devices that you didn't know existed yet, of course. So let's make something fun. You know, every one of you have a friend or a distant relative that just got into development and asked you like uncomfortable question. So I'm going to do that with Constantine, right? I'm not really convinced about all this auto layout stuff. So, for example, I really like to write wall of code and put in like in my view controllers and I know where there are this code live and I know how it works. So why should I switch to something like interface builder? Uh, yeah, okay. So first of all, I start with this slide because I love this slide. I love how lies in English have two different meanings. So um, that's for the beginning, and that's actually the problem with your approach. Um, you know where your code is because you wrote the code, but any other person that could approach your code later, your project, maybe you have a new coworker, or maybe just you in the future. So you, in five years, you will not remember the name of the class. You will not remember where did you put the code because the, the naming convention changed, right? So uh, you will be kind of new to the, to the project, and you will not find your layouting. If everything happens inside the storyboard, you know every time where to look for um, all the layouting stuff. So what you're saying is that using like storyboard will help people to get on board on my project, right? Absolutely, and it will also help yourself in the future to just understand where you did put the stuff. Okay, that's a like, good point. But then again, I've not used auto layout or storyboard 
till today. And I have a lot of legacy views. I don't want, really want to rewrite all that code. What can I do? Yeah. Um, the beauty of Auto Layout is that you can start using it uh, from whatever point you want. So if you start a new feature of your project, you can just start using Auto Layout from that view on in the hierarchy and put it inside a not Auto Layout view. So actually, there is no excuse. You can put it like inside the not Auto Layout view, and you can also put not Auto Layout view inside an Auto Layout view hierarchy. That's difficult, but trust me, it works. I mean, it's difficult to say. Actually, doing it is pretty fun and easy. OK, but then again, Storyboard and Git, they don't work really well together. So, eh? That's true. That's true. If you have a versioning uh, system like Git, you can encounter some problems uh, with merging your storyboards. Uh, storyboards are XML files, so something can go wrong because you don't have control on it. But you can um, think about it for head. So um, it all depends on, on, the, on, the, on how much your team is big, but uh, you can divide your monolithic storyboard in many storyboards uh, and uh, that link together. So in this way, you would have one storyboard for the main interface. You would have another storyboard for uh, the preferences. You can have another storyboard for everything related to the encryption and stuff. And this could make working on different projects on the same time from different people very easy. OK. I think I'm good for now. So. Now we have a new wheel for our new coding car, if you want. I, I don't like the metaphor, but still, it works. Um, we discovered that learning something, learning this technique, the storyboards, learning how to layout, would uh, leave you with something that you learn once and you can continue using for 10 years. It's not something that Apple does for you. It's something that Apple does for itself and then let you use it. And that's just amazing. So. Uh, the developers that are working on these technologies are trustworthy, are Apple developers. I mean, uh, are one of the best developers uh, in the world, except the one in, in this room, I think. And uh, um, all your projects from the, layout from, the uh, layout, from the UI perspective, will be very, very easy to understand, even for people that never saw your code before. So change of topic, persistence. You have many options to save your user data and you don't want to screw that. So you can code your own persistent layer. You can use a third-party framework. Or then again, you can use core data. Guess what I'm going to talk about. But let's see. Who has code your own code layer for persistence? Raise your hand. Don't be shy. I did. No, I'm, I'm okay. lying. Out of people. Really? <laughs> Didn't you have something else better to do for your app? There is like only the only exception if you are very specific needs. But spoiler alert, many of you don't have those needs. And there is a big initial effort in creating a new framework. You need to keep the maintenance during the year. There are a lot of bugs. It doesn't worth your time. Or you can use a third party framework that solves most of the problem. Could be good. There are many frameworks that you can use. Oh, it could disappear overnight. For example, parse. Facebook acquired parse, shut it down, so all the developers that were using parse had to rewrite everything. So that's not very cool. And also, many of those frameworks may use a closed data format. So if you want like, to move to something else, it's very hard to do. So what about core data? Core data is free. It's from Apple. It's a very solid framework with a long history. Every year, I publish new features, and that's amazing. And it uses open formats. You can use an XML store, SQLite store, your own store if you really want. So that's pretty good. Also, it's really feature-packed. There are many features that you won't find in any other framework. This year, they released automatic cloud kit synchronization. You can access your data in a synchronous way. It's pretty, pretty good. So I so guess <laughs> it's my turn now. <laughs> the head of shame. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. So um, 
I started to use Core Data five years ago. I tried it. I actually tried it. And uh, in two days, I wasn't able to get anything from it. I mean, it's a very, very complicated framework, and it has a very steep learning curve. That's sort of true. Every framework has a learning curve, so uh, if you choose any kind of framework, you need to give you yourself some time to study it. Core Data has a very, very good documentation. And once you get the grip of it, you can use it for a very long time for any kind of project. Even if you don't have to save data, for example, you can use it in memory. Also, Core Data gets better every year. So today, Core Data is not Core Data from five years ago. So everything you maybe learn on the internet is not true anymore. OK, OK, yeah, thank you. Uh, but then again, um, th this one is straight from the internet. I, uh, internet told me that Core Data is very, very slow. So, and I didn't make any the benchmark, of course, because I trust the internet. So it should be true, right? Yeah, that's completely a myth. Core Data is not slow. Actually, it's faster than anything you can code by yourself. You can like, query millions of data without any kind of problem. Just try it, please. It's amazing. OK. OK, so I, I shouldn't trust the internet. That's what you are saying. Yeah. OK, OK, I got it. Um, but then again, uh, sometimes I have a very, very complex projects. I have to do very complex queries. And uh, with Core Data, this isn't possible, right? Surprisingly, it is. In Core Data, you can also use SQL. You can do oh. very complex query. But I do not suggest that. Usually, in core data, you use predicate. If, you, if you're not able to use a predicate to gather your data, there is some probably wrong in your data structure. So what I suggest is to review your data structure, use core data, and you gain a lot of like, quality of the app, quality of your data. So you are saying that probably using core data, my data structure can be better, can get better, yes. actually. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, thank you. I'm convinced. Yeah. So another wheel has added, to, has added to our cart. You can see a pattern. You <laughs> learn it once, use it for a long time. New features every year. It's very trustworthy, open format, fast. So if you haven't used Core Data, or if you ever used like some years ago, please give it another shot, because it's amazing. So unit testing. I hate unit testing. I, I hate it. I love unit testing. There is someone here that does unit testing. Oh, oh. oh, oh, oh I'm relieved. I love oh, you guys. That's amazing. Yeah, maybe you are lying, but uh, yeah, it's, maybe you're it's lying, just amazing. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, uh, it's impossible to talk with you people that raise your hands in in the in the hall because uh, every people that you encounter say no unit testing. I don't know what it is, or they just try to hide. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, amazing. We love you. When it comes to unit testing, you only have two options. Do it or not do it. So please do it. And the, there is like a very fact that makes me think, because every developer that I meet say that unit tests are good. But most of them doesn't mm. do unit tests. Oh, so I can't really explain that. Unit testing is a very, very old technique. If you don't know that, NASA was using those in the 1960s. IBM was using those for NASA. Uh, they are very, very good. There is a very good integration with Xcode. It's very fast. You just write small function that tests your code. You can launch it. You can use it while you're deploying your app. They can like break your build. So it's very, very good. And if you use the amazing fact of unit test, if you use it properly, they improve the quality of your app and the structure of your code. <laughs> so um, I have a very small project, right? It's I, I mean it's just an app that I coded in one week. Uh, so why do I have to use unit tests? Because I mean using tests take your time. So it's is it worth it? What if I tell you that actually unit tests save you time? <gasps> it's, it's, it's so Th good. That's amazing. That's amazing. But uh, yeah. I'm yeah. amazed as well. You still need to check that your function and your classes work, right? Yes. So what are you doing right now? I write a lot of NS logs inside the code. That's 
print for the young generation, but I, I use a lot of NS logs inside my code and, and see the result. So wouldn't it be better just to write a small piece of code that check your other code that you can run every time you make a change and you don't have to rebuild your app every time and try it and touch all the button of the UI just to test if it works? Oh my god, so I, I would not have to rebuild the app every time. So to run the app inside the device, because now Macs don't exist, so it's, it's only iOS. I, I will not have to run my app, actually. That's correct. So it will be faster, not slower. And automated. Oh, oh my god, oh my god, okay, this is amazing. Um, but then again, uh, my code, my code I, I, I tried to use unit tests, uh, but the problem is that it was an already made project. Uh, it was a very big project, and there were so many dependencies uh, between classes that I was not able to use unit tests. Okay, so you're telling me you are a bad developer. I, I, I was, so but I, I was a bad developer, but now I want to use unit tests. I'm, I'm, I'm good, right? Okay, uh, yeah. so what you can do is use, like, for a start, you can use unit test for the new features of your app. Okay. So you start learning about the unit test and to avoid dependencies. Like for, you can use various techniques, you can <coughs> dependency injection, for example, or something like that. And then you can break your application in smaller part so you can test those. This will improve the code structure. Oh wow, so, so using unit tests on an already existing project could lead to a better code structure of the of the of the same project. Yeah. Oh my god. This is I mean this is amazing. Uh, but then again, I don't believe in mass produce, not organic, gluten full unit tests. I heard it, so now answer to that. I don't really have an answer to that. Try holistic programming. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Seems fine. So this is the last wheel that we will add today. Unit test. It will improve your app quality and less bug for you. It will improve your code structure. Please, 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 just use unit test. And don't lie about it. That's true. So uh, we are so sorry that our uh, car has only three wheels. So we left a, a panda uh, slide um, while we were getting to the point. Because um, those things that we showed you uh, are, are so simple, right? Uh, I think that you heard them so many times, and probably you, some of the times you, you started to thinking like, yeah, probably I should start using this technique. Uh, but nobody then does for real use those techniques. What, in our experience, what would those kind of uh, um, approaches are the best possible um, for the sanity of your future. So let's talk about the point of the whole presentation. Uh, cousins are probably dumb. We discovered it. And <laughs> yeah, you have, you have a slide there. Uh, then common patterns uh, and established technologies can save you time. At the beginning, you will have to learn to use those technologies, but this happens with everything. And I, actually, it happens also with the code that yourself write. But then you will be faster and you will keep your sanity for yourself. Because looking at the same project after five years, if you are lucky enough to look at the same project for five, five years, it's uh, um, it's just a pleasure to find the, the things in the right places every time, every single time. So last question for the cousin. Mm. What about like Swift UI or all the new shiny stuff that are released every year and they're like not really established as now? Yeah. I'm, I'm, mm. Okay, so let's, let's talk about it. This is a very interesting question because um, it all depends. Like everything in your life, uh, it all depends on what you are doing. If you are working for a client, if you are doing a paid job, we highly suggest you to use only the established technologies. If you are doing the project for fun, if you are, are just experimenting with stuff and, and, and this, kind of, so this kind of approach, um, it, it can actually be a good idea to start looking at Swift UI, uh, to start looking at the, all the new stuff that Apple provides you. Actually, it, it would be the best approach possible because this way you will be um, able to be very skilled when they will be established. Um, the main problem uh, with that is that uh, you, I, what I suggest is to remember what happened with Swift. Uh, Swift came out, then there was the migration from one to two. There was the migration for, from two to three, from three to four, and so on and so on. So this was our point. I hope we, you enjoyed it. And uh, um, 
now we will take questions and stuff. But uh, I, I want to, I would like to make clear one thing that we are really patient about what we uh, showed you today. And so if you want, j and you meet us outside, just stop us. If you have any question that you are not able to make now, just stop us. We will talk together. We will see. Maybe, maybe we are wrong. Maybe you can insult us. That's, that's good. We will insult back. That's an back. option. Always an option. Yeah, ab absolutely. We are good in insulting, so it's, it's OK. And you can find a way to turn Constantine off. That yeah. would be like, perfect. Thank you. <laughs>